What's up guys, this is Jusu Analysis by DCD, episode number three. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at two of my passing systems, both my side smash passing system and my over over style passing system from a small clip of mine at the Rio Grand Slam. So let's check it out. From the start of this clip, you can see that I'm in a, a worm guard style position here. We're gonna go ahead and bring out the little highlighters. We're in a worm guard style position here and my opponent, he's trying to pass this grip to his other hand around my leg, my back leg here. Um, so my, my idea when an opponent is attempting to do this to me is I'm constantly trying to stuff his foot in between both my legs and step over and start attempting a side smash or a knee cut style position. So let's continue here and we'll get into this video. So as you can see, I'm stuffing it underneath and now I'm gonna hold that leg there because I no longer want him to get out. And my goal from this position from this position is to keep my knee uh, behind my opponent's hamstring, as you can see here. This is my opponent's hamstring, I believe. <laughs> and I, I, I'm, I'm attempting to keep my knee behind his legs and kind of make a lock. I don't want him to be able to take his leg out anymore. And I want to use this grip. I want to pull this grip to me. And I'm going to pull that grip to me. And as I pull it to me, it's going to make it even more difficult for my opponent to move his hips. Uh, to the side that I don't want him to go, which would be I don't want his hips to move to this side. So as we'll see, I'm going to attempt to, to insert my knee and start forcing his hips to the other side and insert and in, enter a side smash style passing position as we'll continue here. But my opponent is using this grip quite well and his, his whole goal from this grip is to insert this leg here he's attempting to insert this leg here it's kind of a worm guard to an x guard setup he's going to try and push me back and then try to insert his leg underneath both my legs and try and lift me overhead in order to enter a better position which would be x guard now this is a little bit difficult uh, but it is a commonly used position uh, i don't necessarily believe it's a great position to use but it is a commonly used setup to x guard so let's keep going here and we'll see how i like to defend it so as my opponent is going for this, he's lifting me up and really trying to force that entry. But it's gonna be very, very difficult because I do have his body controlled. Now he's constantly trying to insert this foot underneath uh, and, in, and go into this x guard style position. But look at my posture here. My posture is very, very powerful here. I, I almost have a body lock over his arm. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm attempting to lock my both hands together. I'm trying to attempt to lock this hand with my other hand that's in the back that you can't see at the moment. And at the same time, I have this head on face pressure. Now I'm using this, I'm, I'm attempting to stretch him out in order to break this annoying grip that he has here. I really, I really do not like this grip. And to be honest with you, I don't like lapel players either or neither. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So we're trying to attempt to break this grip and in doing so, we're gonna we're gonna put this pressure on his head, stretch my opponent out, and I'm gonna sprawl my hips back, and that's gonna break that grip there. Goodbye, lapel guard. So I break that grip, and right away, once I break that grip, as you saw, I had a natural instinct in a way. My idea here is to insert my leg, uh, my foot rather, in between his legs. And now from this position, I either have a side smash that I can enter or I can start going for a knee cut. If I were to pull my opponent's hips to this side, I could enter a knee cut, but I prefer to go for a side smash. So I actually, instead of pulling my opponent's hips to this side, I'm gonna to attempt to pull my, hip, my opponent's hips down to this side and enter that side smash. And as you can see here as well, I have this underhook. I'm ready for about anything. I can go either left or right, which puts a lot of fear in my opponent's mind. And it's a very, very powerful uh, position to be in. So let's keep going here. And as you can see, like I was saying, my goal is to pull my opponent's hips to this side because if I can keep my opponent's hips on this side, it makes the side smash position much, much easier and much more effective. And as you can see here, I just have my hand based out to allow me to easily insert my knee behind my opponent's hamstring once again and start this passing system that I like to use. So here I go, inserting my knee inside, and I'm gonna start grabbing this grip. And as you can see, just a second ago, we'll, we'll, re, we'll redo this here. You can even see my hand right here. It's pushing down. I'm almost going to do, do a club motion, but it's very, very quick. It's kind of difficult to see, but we'll see here. I club his leg down, and that kind of puts it a little bit more into a better position for me to start passing and start entering 
this side smash style position that I use so frequently. So, and also this grip here, as you can see, this grip here is just helping me pull myself to him and move myself closer to his body, which eventually I would like to get my head once again on his chin and his body completely smashed to my right, okay? So this is kind of the idea from this position. And I'm always just trying to look for these style grips. I also have a grip uh, you can't see at the moment, but you saw earlier, I have a grip on the belt, which is behind his hips here. And I have this grip on the collar, as, you, as, I, as I already said. And he has, just has a basic frame here. So let's keep going. So the most common response from this position is that my opponent will try and shift his hips, shrimp his hips, if you will, to that other side. And in doing so, it does stop this side smash attempt, but it allows me to enter my next passing system, which is the over-over style passing system. Of course, I hope that you guys have all heard of the over-under style passing system, which is a very common jiu-jitsu system. Um, but this over-over style passing system is very similar, but in my, I, I believe it's, it's, it's truly way better, as we'll see here in a second. So as he shifts his hips, right away I'm going for this body lock. Because he shifted his hips, I'm, I'm, I'm able to go for this body lock attempt in, in which I'll be reaching and trying to flatten my opponent's hips out to the other side now that he's giving me the momentum to bring his hips to that other side. And now I've entered the position here. Now from this position, this is not ideal for me just quite yet. Uh, my head at the moment, my head at the moment is facing this direction. I do not want my head on that side just as if I was in an over under position. It would not be ideal to have my head um, on this side if I were to be passing over under in terms of I would be on this side trying to pass to the left. Um, so I'm trying to do the, basically the same idea, but now I'm gonna switch my head to the other side which will allow, or not actually not allow my opponent to really attack me in any way, and it will give me a really, really powerful control over my opponent's hips, as we'll see here just in a second. And as you can see as well, I also am holding my opponent's pant grip because I'm trying to push his leg down. And I'm pushing his leg down, why? Because it's really, really important that I create this knee-hip separation. Knee-hip separation is truly everything if you wanna pass somebody's guard. If you wanna pass somebody's guard via Toriando, leg drag, it's all about knee hip separation. When your opponent's knee is close to his hips, he has a very, very powerful guard, but when not, it, his, his guard is much, much weaker, as we'll see here in a second. So I'm constantly trying to push that down and walk his hips to that other side to enter, uh, to use the over over to enter a side smash actually. So as you can see, I switch my head to the other side and now I make new grips here. Now with these new grips that I just made, it actually allows me to, to force the hips even more so to this side. Let's, let's move this back just a second so you guys really get a clear idea of what I'm trying to do here. I'm moving his hips to the other side, and it does not matter one bit that he's trying to hook my leg here. Actually, it kind of helps, helps me. It gives him a false sense of security that he's actually able to, uh, to do something from this position. But truly, uh, my base is so strong from this position. As you can see, once again, my posture is down. It's going to be very, very difficult to get him off me unless he were to be able to create some sort of upward motion with his hands so he could push me both away and up. If he's not able to do such, it's gonna be very, very difficult to get out of this position. So let's keep going. And as you can see, I easily walk his legs to the other side. And now right away, I, now my goal, once I've, once I've gotten over my opponent's hips, as you can see here, I'm now over my opponent's hips. My goal is now to move up his body, start moving my arms up his body and start controlling the upper body. Now that I have the, the lower body control basically with my hips, as you can see here, now it's time to get my upper body on his upper body. You've always heard in jiu-jitsu, chest on chest, chest on chest. It's a very, very important concept and it'll allow you to apply much more pressure, pressure excuse me, and allow uh, basically allow you to pass his guard with much more ease. So let's keep going. And you'll see here in a second, I make a little hook around his leg. That's just to give me a little little idea and we'll stop here once again sorry for all the stops but I'm really trying to to give you guys all the details of this position that I'm this is this is everything that I'm thinking in these positions here so now from this position my opponent is up on his elbow with an over the back grip now this over the back grip is not favorable but that's all he had because I was in this over over style position right so now from this position my goal here is to to force his back his back here I'm pointing at my head but his back is right behind my head is to force his back onto the mat via my head. My head is gonna be forcing him back just like so. Excuse me, I should switch to my pointer tool, but that looks kinda of cool, that looks almost right. 
But anyway, I'm going to be pushing his back to the mat. And at the same time, I'm going to be pulling his hips, his hips here. I'm holding his hips. Actually, I am holding his hips, but also my, uh, my arm in the back is kind of just securing everything. And I'm going to move it down to his hips a little bit. I'm going to pull his hips to me to not allow him to have that, that, that power to not, to not allow his back on the mat, if you understand what I mean. I'm attempting, like I said, to put his back on the mat. And in order to do so, I need to pull his hips out from underneath him. At the same time, use my head to push his back to the mat. And that's going to give me a lot of power and a lot of control and force his back to the mat, which will make it much, much safer. I'm all about being safe. I just want to make the most safest passing transition with the least risk. That's my whole idea when I'm trying to do any sort of thing, whether it be passing or sweeping. But that's the idea here. I'm just trying to move into a safer passing position. And you'll see here just in a second how I do that. I push him back on the mat and now I'm really, really strong here. And now I'm going to grab, as you'll see, I'm grabbing his collar, pulling it to me, pulling it towards me to keep his hips on this side. I want his hips completely on this side here. I do not want his hips to switch back to the other side now that I've entered such a strong position. As before, his, his hips were able to switch to the other side because I was a little bit loose and I, I, didn't, I didn't have all these controls. So I'm trying to collect all these controls before I move on to the next step. I'm always looking at steps. One, two, three. I'm always trying to, try, trying to move from one step to the next. Let's keep going here. The next step for me is to just step over both of his legs, which was very, very easy because his back is on the mat. It was very, very easy to step over both his legs. And now I'm going to enter a leg drag position. Now, why do I go leg drag rather than side control right away? If you're able to enter a leg drag, it's far superior than the side control because it allows you to really maintain control and not allow your opponent's hips to move. If I were to jump straight to side control, my opponent would have the opportunity to move his hips and possibly escape. But if I go to a leg drag and then side control, it's just that next step like I was talking about earlier. Uh, it allows me to control a little bit better and really just stop my opponent from moving at all. And this is really, really a great detail. Whenever you're trying to, whenever you pass the guard, it is a great idea to walk your opponent's hips to the side, excuse me, to this side. And then once you have them walk to the side, you can slowly move to side control in a safe manner. And that right there is my favorite way to pass the guard via side smash pressure and my over over style system that I actually developed myself. So keep that in mind. Uh, whenever you're fighting an opponent who plays lapel, always stuff the legs in between and then move on from there. When I, when I set the legs in between, like I was saying earlier, I definitely prefer to go to a side smash, but maybe your knee cut passer, which is great too. But as you saw, the side smash is, is a great idea because you can go for the side smash and when your opponent switches hips to the other side, you can enter this over over style passing position, which is not used enough in jiu-jitsu, even though it is a really, really superior and powerful position in jiu-jitsu. And guys, that is it for this episode. Thank you so much. I hope you guys got a little thing or two from that video. If you did, please like and subscribe and there'll be a lot more content in the future. And if you want to check out some of my other content, I'm sure there'll be something here and a little something there as well. So check it out. Close.